Hi, I'm Jamie from the Utah Education Network. Welcome to a new episode of UEN Nearpod News. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can differentiate your lessons using Nearpod. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's first define differentiation and then look at ways you can differentiate instruction in Nearpod. Differentiating instruction means tailoring instruction to meet individual student needs. This may mean teaching the same material to all students using different strategies, or it may require teaching lessons based on different difficulty levels. Three ways to consider differentiating your instruction might be based on the content, or what students learn, the process, which is how students learn, or the product, um, allowing students to demonstrate mastery, of knowledge or skills. Let's look at how you can differentiate instruction in Nearpod using the content, the process, and the product. So first, the content. One key to knowing which students need extra support is using assessments. Starting with an assessment will help you get a general idea of where your students are at. Throughout a lesson, you can add on-the-fly activities to continue to check for understanding. Launching a lesson as student-paced can give students more time to work on their own. You can also launch a live lesson and then switch to student-paced mode to work with small groups. Student-paced codes can be given to student groups based on learning needs and interests. You can also easily duplicate a lesson and add additional supports to one lesson group. Additional supports might include vocabulary words that appear in the lesson, videos with checks for understanding or additional instructions. Choice boards allow students to direct their own learning and gives them the ability to work independently. When differentiating the process, we're looking at how students learn. Adding audio to slides or creating slides that can be read using the immersive reader supports students who need additional help with reading the English language or are auditory learners. Visual reference images can be added to slides or questions to support visual learners. You can also give students a self-paced code at the end of the lesson so they can go back and review content or get a little extra practice. Lastly, let's look at differentiating the product in Nearpod. When differentiating the product, we're providing students with options to show mastery or knowledge. In Nearpod, this may include a draw activity, a collaborate board, or allowing students to use the microphone to verbally answer questions. Students can also take notes during a lesson to add additional information that they can refer back to when completing an assignment. Teachers can also allow students to go back in a live Nearpod to self-correct. Adding web content in Nearpod allows students to show mastery by bringing in additional learning tools. As always, you know your students best, so tailor your instruction to their needs. So that's it for this episode of UEN Nearpod News. I hope that this tip will help you to be able to use Nearpod more efficiently and effectively in your classroom. Thanks for joining.